Star Trek 2. Oh. I know you must get it all the time. Uh, where are you guys with the screenplay? Uh, are, are you guys going to be able to start production or is in the fall? And, and are you guys more comfortable than, say, you were three or four months ago when J.J. seemed like, mm, I don't know what's going on? You know, J.J. did this little side project. I don't know if you heard of it called Super Rain. Yes. Uh, so he's finally done with that little home movie of his. You know, it's out already. I don't know if you heard of it. But, you know, it was all about making sure he was done with it. The, we have been developing a story even while he was working on Super 8 all together. And I think it's going to be what the movie is. I think we really know what the movie is going to be. And we're in soft prep. We have designers working on the Enterprise and what could change. We have designers working on the alien planets, whatever they may be. I can't tell you exactly. But we're, we're really on track. We really do believe in what we have as an idea for the sequel. Uh, he is, uh, I think he is resting as a result of uh, finishing Super 8. But I think we're uh, going to announce soon, very, very soon now, uh, when things are going to happen. But in terms of the development of the movie and the design of the movie, that's never stopped. And we're on track and we really, we really like what we have going. And if you're a Star Trek fan, we're on the case and I hope you like it. No, and that's great. And I, I guess, you know, people just worry, you know, fans are so concerned, like, you know, that you know, the studio has, like, a release date. And are they going to make the release date? And obviously it sounds like now you guys are more than comfortable. Like, you feel like you're on the way to make it. We, we always felt comfortable, you know. And, and by the way, in the first movie, there was, like, a release date poster before we even started writing it. Oh, wow. So we're, like, in a theater, like, oh, it comes out in 08? <laughs> I guess we better get started on this, you know what I mean? So... It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dance that happens. Paramount, we have to give a lot of credit to for being patient with us and for, for betting on us and for knowing that they would rather have us all come together than start anew. You know, they really are. They get it. Look, by the way, Super 8 is a Paramount production. Yeah. So it's not like they can pretend they had no idea what was going on with <laughs> Super 8 Paramount. Okay, the delay is a little bit on you guys. Um, same with, you know, Hawaii Five O. that's a CBS, Viacom, yeah. Paramount show. So they've been great, and they really want to know, I think, what fans want to know, which is, do you guys have a story, and is it coming along, and is it, are we going to be left holding the bag or not? And I think we have it going on, and I think, and by the way, we've pitched a story to Paramount, and they loved it. So, so a couple of people at Paramount, Adam Goodman, Mark Evans, know they what know. we're going to do. And so you should you should find them on the street and find out, <laughs> ask them what's going on. All right. My guess is that by the time you get to Saturday, you'll have had 25 people ask you what's going on with Star Trek, and some you without trying to do it, some little hint might come out. Maybe we'll it see. It might have, but you're the first to ask. I'm the first. You're the first to ask, and I get credit for asking. You get credit for asking, and I I, I talked a lot, a lot about it. I think we yeah. got you know. Oh no, I'm not. By I'm the way, <laughs> let me tell you this. This is yesterday. I was at a meeting. Me and Alex with J.J. Abrams and Damon Lindelof looking at designs for how the Enterprise might change. Oh, okay. So yesterday we were in a, with Scott Chambliss, an amazing production designer that we worked with on Alias, who did Cowboys and Aliens and who's now back for Star Trek. He did the first Star Trek. And yesterday we were looking at designs of the alien planets that we might be looking at. He had actual cardboard cutouts of the opening sequence with the Enterprise. I can't tell you where it is. <laughs> Flying over, I can't tell you where. But we're like, like, we're working on it, okay? We're not just laying around. You know, obviously you were involved uh, in the first two Transformers films. And I'm just curious, is this one of those things where it's, um, you enjoy working on it still because it's, it's just the love of the franchise? Yeah, you know, and especially in the movies, the movies, because they're live action and because they have certain requirements, there's only certain things you can do in those. And then in the animated series, there's other things you can do with them. You can actually spend more time with the actual title characters, the Transformers. So when we got the opportunity to say, hey, maybe we can be part of the animated series, we thought all the things we couldn't do in the movies we can do in this show, and that's why we did it. And uh, how involved are you able to be like on a show like that, you know, with all the other things that you're working on? And because and, obviously there's still new seasons coming on. I mean, is it something that you can, you know, you pop in every you know, week or so or every couple of weeks while they're working on, on screenplays and stuff, or how does it sort of work? Uh, because I didn't, me and Alex didn't know a whole lot about animation, so we hired a great hire. We attracted who, people who were willing to partner with us, these amazing people who really knew animation. So they have been in charge of actually finding the people they knew about animation and turning up with uh, the, the great people in Japan. But in terms of story, that's the, th that's the part that we thought we could contribute to. So we contribute to making sure that the, the overarching series and the overarching mythology of the whole show is something we all want to do. 
but we've been students of mythology and we've been there for making sure the stories are, are the things we wanted to tell what, that we couldn't do in the movies. Yeah. That was my question, obviously. There must be little things that you loved from the series growing up or other things, you know, just from the toys that you can obviously put in the, the TV series that there was no time for in the movies. Right. Well, is there anything that you guys have specifically requested or that you guys wanted to do that got to be in the show that you were, like, really pleased about that got to make it? R.C., making her a big character. Soundwave, doing him kind of right. You know, Optimus, and, like, I wanted to have, like, a base where they could really, like, that's the place where they operate out of. Um, having stories that are just about the Transformers and not... The human, not, yeah, not yeah. And, the, by the way, the humans are important, and I don't... I'm not dissing that on the movies. Right. That was an important part of the movies, but... And, and there's, they're part of the animated series, but having an entire episode just focus on Optimus and Bumblebee and, and R.C. and the gang... That's something we couldn't quite do in the movies, so we got a lot. We got to do a lot that we couldn't do in the in the movies on the show. And uh, are you guys now interested in doing other animated projects? Are you like considering it at all? You know, animation has been like really fun. So yeah, uh, uh, there's a it's, it's a different palette, and you can yeah. do different kinds of things. And it's actually when you when you're doing great animation, it's actually really satisfying, especially when you're doing a, kind of like a movie. Like yeah. you know, we have Brian Tyler doing the the music on the animated series. It feels like a movie. Yeah. And so to be able to do that every week is great. Uh, that's fantastic. And, um, I, you know, here's a big hit. If you haven't seen it, you should absolutely check it out. It's on The Hub. Um, 7 o'clock, The Hub, Saturday. Uh, but also, you're also in Comic-Con because the world premiere of Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah. And how excited are you after, you know, being here a year ago with Harrison and all that stuff to come back and, and do the premiere? And, and now that the movie is finished... You know, and it's a, been a project you guys have worked on for a while. What has been the most satisfying thing about it so far? Watch or at least seeing it on the big screen. Uh, it's hard to say that anything has been satisfying yet because we're just holding our breath. Like, it comes out in two weeks. We're premiering it here. John Favreau, the director, really felt like it was like an important thing to do because Comic-Con has been so good to him and to us. And the, uh, the, uh, the fans who come here and want to see him personally and want to check out early stuff, they have been a big part of like marketing the movie. So part of bringing it here is kind of saying thank you to Comic-Con. But even when you're saying thank you, and even though we like the movie, you don't know till it's out. So we're just crossing our fingers and just going, please let word of mouth be good. Please let people like the movie, because you never know, you never know. But personally, for yourself, on a satisfaction level, when you've watched it, are you like, wow, you know, uh, Harrison just nailed it. I mean, he was the per I mean, is there stuff in it that you just like, mm, that's what we were thinking when we were writing the script? We, eight, num number one, never thought we'd get the cast that we got. We got James Bond, we got Harrison, forget about the rest of the cast. We got Paul Dano, we got, uh, we got Olivia Wilde, we got uh, 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 Anna de la Guerra, yeah. we got Walt Goggins, we got Paul Dano. I mean, it's great. The, the entire cast is amazing. So we never thought we'd get that. So we're in the desert in Santa Fe making this movie, and it's like summer camp. We're like, we're really having a good time, and there's Harrison Ford over there by the campfire, and there's John Favreau with a ukulele. This is a dream. This can't possibly go well. And then when you see the movie, you see that some of the camaraderie and some of the fun of the camp actually ended up in the movie, and you see, you know, Harrison and, and Daniel kind of busted each other's chops during the movie. They were like... It was kind of like a sports team where they're like, oh, hey, good looking, and like <laughs> making fun of each other. And so to see that translate to the screen is amazing. And then you see that the movie is, 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 a, is, a, is a genuine, gigantic movie. But when you were there, you really felt like you, you get to see a little bit of the inside of, you get to see their, their friendship a little bit on the screen. And so we're proud of it. It's a good movie. I really like it. But again, it's not a known title. It's not a known thing. And people have to get over, like, is it a comedy? Is it a cartoon? It's like, no, it's a, it's kind of a serious, fun adventure version yeah. of Cowboys and Aliens.